This is John Cooler with DiscountJuicers.com. Today I have another exciting episode for you. It's always a fun day here at Discount Juicers when I get a brand new juicer to test out and show for you guys. You know, a lot of the information on juicers come directly from the manufacturer, but you can't always believe what you hear from the manufacturer. So today I'm going to set the truth straight and I'm going to show you guys what the new Breville Crush Juicer is is all about so you guys may be familiar with Breville Breville puts out this high speed centrifugal ejection juicers uh, the original uh, juice fountain elite the original juice fountain the um, juice fountain icon and uh, you know the juice fountain compact all those are models now those models are all similar they're centrifugal models most of them are centrifugal ejection models um, and this one totally different this one is actually a slow RPM juicer this is called a vertical single auger style juicer. Now these have been on the market for several years now and it's only now that Breville is deciding to come out with one because it's a area that they're not very strong in. So I'm excited to show you guys what this juicer is going to look like and actually more importantly how it's going to work with some garden fresh produce. Anyways more about the produce in a minute. I'm kind of excited about that because I, I grew all this to myself. But uh, let's talk about the crush for a minute. So you can see here this is the uh, Breville Crush, because it's a low RPM juicer or slow juicer, runs at 80 RPMs, which is actually quite slow. Their other juicers may run up to 10,000 RPMs. So this is going to be significantly quiet. Now with every juice extractor uh, style, whether it's a centrifugal ejection or this style, there's always pros and cons and you'll have to weigh out which juicer will best meet your needs. And that's why I make a lot of these videos. At present time I have over 200 videos comparing and showing you guys how all the different juicers work so that you'll get the best juicer for you. Uh, let's see, so the Breville Crush juicer, it says five year, and that's because it has a five year motor warranty. On the rest of the machine, it's a 12 month warranty, so that's one year. So one year on everything, five years on the motor only. Uh, on a, as a personal note, I have found that the motor is probably the least likely thing to fail on any juicer. So the Breville Crush Juicer, the model number on this one is BJS600XL. And uh, I guess next, without further ado, let's open the box up and show you guys what comes with the Breville Crush. All right, so inside the box here, you're going to get a couple things. Number one is your uh, one-year warranty information and your instruction booklet. Put that aside. Uh, the next part of the machine is the main motor body itself. That's this guy right here. You can see it says Breville on it. And yes, if you're thinking this looks like some other... Uh, vertical single auger style machines on the market it absolutely does and maybe I'll talk to you more about that in a second uh, in addition you got a the main body of the machine right here we're gonna go ahead and uh, simply put that on the top it kind of rests up like this uh, in addition you got your catch cup so you have one catch cup for the uh, juice and one catch cup for the pulp and finally, you get a cleaning brush. Now, this may sound funny, but the cleaning brush is probably the most important thing that comes with the machine. It allows you to easily cre clean the screen on the juicer. Now, the screen is the most important thing to clean on the juicer because if you leave stuff clogged in the screen, that's going to reduce your yields and the juicer's not going to work as well over time. So it's very important to scrub that screen clean each and every time. In general, the more screen area there is, the harder the juicer is to clean because the screen is the part that takes the most scrubbing to get it clean. And that's actually everything in the box. So let's go ahead and uh, put this box aside and talk more about the Breville Crush Juicer. Let's talk more about the different parts of the Breville Crush Juicer. We're gonna go ahead and set this guy back over here and set it like that. And uh, first, there's a little hang tag. And on this hang tag, it says Breville, nutrients in the juice, fiber in the pulp. How do you make a juice with a smooth, pulpy texture? So yes, that's right, uh, Breville is advertising this as a smooth yet pulpy texture. Now what does that mean? That's kind of like describing my face. It's a smooth yet hairy, <laughs> if I don't shave, texture. <laughs> so this juicer makes a pulpy juice. So instead of saying this juicer makes a pulpy juice, they're trying to make it sound all frou-frou. It makes a smooth pulpy texture. And uh, the slow juicer crushes and squeezes to make juice with nutrients and a little fiber for a thicker, smoother, or it says smother, I think they um, spelled it wrong, texture. <laughs> so yes, this will make a pulpier juice. Okay, so first you have two collection cups. Uh, this one is actually for the pulp with the little handle on it, and the juice collection is right here with the handle on it on the back. And that kind of gets set up like that. 
Uh, the next part of the machine is the pusher. You get a little dinky pusher. Now, for best results, I highly encourage you guys not to use the pusher. If you're pushing things into the Breville Crush or any other vertical single auger style juicer, in my opinion, you're feeding things in too quickly and you should just let gravity uh, feed things in and you need to take your time when feeding things into any vertical auger juicer. So we're gonna put that aside. The next part is the top piece and the funnel. So it is separatable, <laughs> separable. <laughs> and uh, this basically is where you feed the produce into the chute and then it goes into the um, auger and where all the magic and the juicing happens. So the next part is the standard auger. This appears to be a Altum auger, which is eight times harder than other augers on other machines. So that's definitely really good. In addition, you have the uh, Altum screen. So this is the improved uh, version of the screen. Eight times harder, once again, looks like a standard screen from many vertical auger juicers here. Finally, you have the automatic wiping blade system, and we are coming up on Halloween, and this is the perfect Halloween color. So if you want a Halloween juicer, get the Breville Crush. It's black and a nice, like, I don't know, Halloween color orange here. So that's really cool. Uh, they probably did that because the orange will uh, tends to stain with the carotenoids of the carrots. If you got uh, orange carrots, then it's not going to show up, actually, with the uh, orange coloring of these silicone wiping blades. Now, these silicone wiping blades, what they literally do is that they um, turn around as the ju juicer's running to literally clean the screen of the juicer to ensure you get the highest yield. Finally, we have the main juicing bowl, and uh, this is where the magic happens. This is where the actual pulp gets fed out this uh, chute right here, and the juice comes out this side. Now, on the bottom, there's this little flap thing. Now, this flap thing should always be pushed in when you're juicing, and I'll tell you why. The reason why is because what this flap does is that this flap keeps back pressure on the produce to keep the produce inside the machine so that you get the highest extraction. So let's see, we got that all pushed in, and I guess the next thing to do is to assemble it. And this is where some people may have some challenges, so you got to pay attention. It's very easy to assemble this machine, but even me the first time, I had some challenges. So the main thing to remember is that there's a little arrow here that says align. You want to align the little arrow here on the front of this housing, which is below this, uh, once again, Halloween orange colored dot on the top, with the lock and align on the top of the motor body housing right here. It says lock and align. So we're going to go ahead and take this align and align it to the align position, and then we're going to rotate it to the right to the lock. Then it locks into place. Very simple, very easy. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take the automatic wiping blade right here and put it onto the screen. That's very simple. Then we're gonna take the auger that just goes right into the middle and seats firmly down on the bottom. Then we're gonna take this orange dot here on the top of the screen and align it with the orange dot on the top of the bowl. And that should just fit in like that, no problem. And the final part is we're gonna take the, once again, orange dot on the top of the feed chute housing. It says align align the, the three orange dots together you're gonna put it in place and then you're gonna simply turn the whole housing to the right and you're locked into place and you're locked and loaded and ready to juice if you do assemble this correctly if you do turn it on the machine should come on and if you don't assemble it correctly it will not come on another thing nice about the Breville unit that I haven't seen on other machines is that there is an overload switch so should you overload the machine the overload switch will pop and you need to just pop it back in. This is much like your circuit breaker at house. So if your machine stops working for some reason, first thing to do is, number one, check to make sure it's plugged in. Number two, make sure it's assembled properly. And number three, make sure this uh, switch has not been tripped. So now it uh, looks like we're set up and all ready to juice. And now we're going to get to talk about my homegrown veggies that we're juicing. Now I always want to encourage you guys to get the highest quality produce available. If you're getting old and wilty produce or soft and mealy apples, they're not gonna juice well. You know, you wanna get fresh, firm produce. I like things firm. <laughs> so anyways, a lot of this produce was fresh picked out of my garden just now. And to get some of these varieties that I'm gonna show you in a minute, you guys literally have to grow it yourself because in industrial agriculture, they're growing things that they could produce on a mass scale and you can't get all these different varieties and different things. So um, grow it yourself, and if you can't, uh, definitely shop at your local farmer's market. Support your local farmers that are growing in your area. So what we're going to juice today are a mydrid of peppers. You can see here we got some, you know, 
small yellow bell, some other kind of red pepper, some orange ones. In addition, I got these long ones. This is actually called the Spanish Spice Pepper. And now with peppers, when you're juicing them, you can juice everything, including the skin, the rind, the seeds, and everything. But you don't want to juice the green top. So we're just going to go ahead and pop that top off and throw that in the compost bin. Next thing we're going to juice is something really common to juice, and that's carrots. You know, many of you guys may be familiar with the standard, like, orange carrot here. Now, orange gets boring in my opinion, so what I like to juice is the heirloom carrots, and sometimes you could find those at a local health food store that sell an organic produce, but unfortunately most times you can't. Um, heirloom carrots are carrots like this that, you know, look like a little V <laughs> upside down. Um, they're, they come in different colors, yellow, uh, red, uh, purple, orange, and different shades. I mean, here's like a yellow carrot here, and here's definitely more of a darker color here. And these have all been prepped, and they're ready to juice. Now, in every different color of produce, there's different nutrients, phytonutrients, phytochemicals in there that I believe are beneficial for us. And that's one of the ways I stay, you know, healthy and looking young and limber and fluid and probably out of beach in a race too. <laughs> So yes, eat all the colors of the rainbow. So you can see I don't just have orange carrots, I have different colors, I have different color peppers. And the next thing we're gonna juice also, is something that you can't often find unless you grow it yourself. These guys are called lemon cucumbers. So you might think, hey John, that looks like a lemon. Well, it does look like a lemon, but this is actually a cucumber. We could go ahead and cut that up and I'll show you the inside there. On the inside there, it looks like a cucumber. You can see the seeds. And I like these cucumbers because they don't have that bitter green skin you know that you get that funny cucumber taste these have a mild flavor and they'd actually be quite sweet if you grow them properly so we're going to juice some lemon cucumbers and finally in the juice today last but not least you always want to juice some leafy green vegetables and in general the uh, low rpm juicers or the vertical single auger and even better the horizontal single auger style machines will juice the leafy greens better than the high speed centrifugal ejection style juicers so i'm really curious to see how the Breville Crush will juice the leafy greens. Now when juicing in the Breville Crush, unlike the standard Breville juice fountain models, you've got to pay attention to what you're juicing and the order you're juicing in. So, you know, if we just went from right to left, we would juice all the peppers, all the carrots, <laughs> all the cucumbers, and all the Swiss chard. And that's probably going to be a disaster waiting to happen. What we need to do is we need to vary the different produce items. We're feeding it to the Breville Crush or for that matter, any vertical single auger style juicer. So what we're gonna do is we're probably gonna feed in a little bit of pepper, a little bit of carrot, a little bit of cucumber, and a little bit of the Swiss chard, and then repeat. And so we're gonna switch up all the different produce items going into the machine. Finally, after we're all done juicing, we're gonna take a strainer and strain out the pulp so you guys could see how much is pulp is generated by the Breville Crush. Because once again, this machine will produce more pulp than Breville's other models. I guess without further ado, let's start juicing. We're gonna go ahead and turn this machine on here. And uh, let's see if we can just fit this small little mini pepper right down the chute. Almost fit down. <laughs> We're gonna go ahead and follow that by a carrot to get that in there. Now this machine, it's running right now. It, it's really quiet and that's one of the benefits of the slow running machines. Now we just put the carrot in there. You can instantly see we're getting some bell pepper carrot juice. Next, what we wanna do is we wanna feed in a little bit of cucumber and we want to give the juicer all different kinds of textures. Now it's really important when juicing things like Swiss chard or other leafy greens is that you want to chop these up into small eighth inch pieces for best results. If you just try to stick this whole thing in there, what's going to happen is these long fibrous strands here in the stalk are going to stick up in the juicer and get stuck where the pulp comes out. And this is not going to be fun because then you're going to make a mess and then there's even going to be more pulp in your juice Especially, this is not good if you don't like pulp to begin with. So we're gonna try to get some space here on the cutting board to uh, you know, chop some of these uh, Swiss chard up. How I like to prepare the produce is I take the whole bunch of Swiss chard, kind of roll it up, and I'll just sit it on the cutting board. And I'm just gonna simply take my knife and just cut down little pieces and move my knife down eighth of an inch each time. We're literally making shreds out of the produce. Now you don't have to do this, but if you want the best results in the machine, I definitely encourage you guys to do this with any vertical single auger style juicer. All right, so there you go. You can see I got all the uh, Swiss chard stalks like cut up into small pieces and all the leafy greens are cut up as well. 
So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and continue feeding in the machine. We're going to feed in a handful of Swiss chard. We're going to cut up some of these carrots smaller so that they can fit in the feed chute. Because unlike Breville's other products that have a wide three inch feed chute that we could easily fit these fatty carrots in. Not going to fit in the Breville Crush unless we cut these in half here. And when you're feeding anything into the Breville Crush juicer, you want to just let the machine work. You want to let it gravity feed and don't just take it and shove it down with a pusher as I'm doing here. Just dropping one piece in at a time, letting it work a little bit before getting the next piece of produce you're going to put through the machine here. Next, we're going to go ahead and drop in this uh, bell pepper. Definitely easily juiced. How about another piece of carrot here? Don't forget about your Swiss chard. Greens are one of the most nutrient-dense foods on the planet. Always encourage you guys to juice a lot of leafy greens. And I know they can get expensive if you're buying them, but guess what? If you're growing them, they're literally all free. After the leafy greens, we're going to go ahead and put another carrot in. Let's go ahead and put in some more of this uh, lemon cucumber here. Oh, now you see what happened? If your juicer stops like this, don't be alarmed. Didn't break. Nothing's wrong. It just means that you're feeding things in too quickly. You need to go ahead and turn this machine from the on position to the middle position or off. Then you're going to push the bottom button and this makes it go in reverse. So it reverses the machine to unjam it and then you're just going to press the on button. Then it's going to catch it and start grinding and juicing like it should once again. Let's go ahead and feed in some of these dark leafy greens in the Breville Crush. You can see the pulp coming out on this side. It's doing an amazing job. We got a nice container full of rich, vibrant colored pulp here. Once again, after the greens, always best to follow with a carrot to help push through the greens through the machine. Oh. Now, if you don't feed your carrots in slowly, this will happen a lot. So, once again, we're going to go ahead and push it to off, hit reverse, and then continue to on works right through it no problem feed in some more lemon cucumber there how about some more pepper here yeah once again seeds and all the machine will literally extract the nutrition out of some of the seeds when you put it in the machine uh, be forewarned though if you are juicing hot peppers man that'll kick up the spice level of your juice so you only need to juice maybe a half of one but it depends on how much spice you like in your life here see uh, more leafy greens let's cut up some more of this carrot here now we are cutting this carrot in half this is a fat diameter carrot sometimes what you might have to do is actually even cut it into quarters you know to make sure it's gonna work properly because this carrot is actually quite hard and fibrous and actually hard for the juice or literally to grind up and extract the juice out of all right next let's put a lemon cucumber in there and uh, I guess what I'm going to do next is finally just probably uh, juice some more of this stuff because I got quite a bit to do. I don't want to bore you guys. And I'll come back at you when I got almost all this juiced. All right, so we're probably about halfway done juicing in the Breville Crush. Overall, for me personally, I prefer the low RPM juicers compared to the high RPM juicers. In general, these guys do a lot better with juicing leafy greens, which in my opinion is probably the, one of the best things you can be juicing. In addition, it's also running slower so it's not as hard on the ears but the other factor for me that's very important is that it's making a higher quality juice every revolution that's spinning and when the juicer's juicing on the high speed juicers is introducing more air into the juice which causes you know more uh, juice separation more oxygen in your juice which in the end results in uh, the more oxygen results in oxidation of your juice which means the nutrients are dissipating or are going to be less than in a slower running juicer all else being equal so you can see here we pretty much done juicing all the greens we just got a bunch of the carrots left and some of the peppers and cucumbers we're going to go ahead and feed those in real quick looks like it's doing a great job the pulp here is coming out it's fairly dry for sure now if you're thinking to yourself John this thing looks like some of the other competitors models the Omega Vert the you know Coving Silent Juicer the Fruit Star or the you know Huron juicer, you'd be right, this is based on the same vertical single auger design. Now I would personally say that this personal machine looks more like the Covings juicer or the Fruit Star juicer than the other two models. The auger and the screen and the way this juicer works and more importantly the wattage of the motor are exactly identical. 
So uh, let's go ahead and continue juicing. We got that last uh, carrot. Oh, looks like we got caught up there. Once again, no big deal. Turn it to off. Hit reverse. Turn it back to on. Runs right through it, and you're ready to juice some more. Follow with a nice yellow core here. here. All right, it looks like our collection cup is getting pretty full. We got some produce left. That's quite all right. I think we'll stop juicing here. And uh, let's see what we got. So always when you're done juicing in any vertical single auger style juicer, you want to let it run another minute or so. As you can see, the juice is still definitely dripping out of the machine. Uh, once you do stop it, you're going to want to tip the machine up to get any leftover juice in there. And you can see we're getting some drips out. The next step you want to do that I recommend is actually you're going to take the uh, pulp catch bin and kind of shift it over and put it under the spout so that you don't get a lot of drips on your counter. So you can see here, here's our rich juice that we made. Now this is marked up to about, I think, four cups here on this uh, container. And now what we're going to do is actually we're going to pour this through a sieve to show you guys how much pulp is left in the juice. Now what I got is a standard Pyrex measuring cup and a standard sieve. Now this machine does not come with a sieve, so you can purchase a sieve like this at a local Walmart or Target like that. And uh, what we're going to simply do is actually pour this uh, through the sieve and we're going to see how much pulp we get. I like to shake this out. Now this sieve does have some larger holes so it'll leave a little bit of pulp in the juice. You can see that's all the uh, juice there and we're going to shake this out a little bit. And I definitely would say that this juicer probably produces some of the most pulp out of any juicer that I've seen. All right, looks like we got all the pulp strained out there. Now we can go ahead and pour this juice back into the container and it's uh, virtually pulp free. Now this is just a simple extra step that you have to go through if you do uh, purchase the Breville Crush or another single auger style machine to get all the pulp out. So uh, be aware of that. All right, virtually pulp free juice right there. And we got this much pulp here. We'll go ahead and uh, whack that down and show you guys what we got here. You can see here, this is all the pulp right here. It's just a nice, fine pulp. Now, you could leave that in the juice because, you know, what they advertise this as as a smooth, pulpy texture. And I don't know about you, but I don't want this much pulp in my juice. So, easy thing to do is just strain it out. Uh, next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and taste the juice made in the Breville Crush. Mmm tastes great not only because it's homegrown produce but because it was made in the slow rpm breville crush juicer i hope you guys enjoyed this video learning more about the breville crush and how it works it appears to work great uh stay tuned for future episodes where i will compare the breville crush to other vertical single auger style juicers so overall i think i liked how the breville crush worked it worked pretty much no problem it juiced like it should made a little bit more pulp one of the problems I have with the Breville Crush is a short one-year warranty on the machine and five years on the motor, whereas other juicers in this category have a 10-year warranty on the whole machine. And uh, I think this is also is priced a little bit uh, more money than some of the other machines. Unless you've got to have the Breville, I might encourage you guys to look at some of the other machines that offer better price, performance, you know, value than the Breville Crush. In the future, I will have some episodes comparing the Breville Crush to some of the other uh, vertical single auger juicers on the market so stay tuned for that so hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode once again my name is john kohler with discountjuicers.com be sure to visit discountjuicers.com slash youtube for special promotional offers for our youtube visitors